Hi, everybody. Uh, I will start again. Um, we are here now in the afternoon session with Dashamir Hoxha. Dashamir is an uh, IT engineer. He's been uh, working for more than 20 years in the IT sector. He uh, was here tomorrow with us for a quite interesting uh, debate uh, with uh, Gian Guido Piani about uh, digital IT. And uh, today, uh, Dashamir is here for a quite interesting topic, which is virtual computer labs. Uh, here in Bolzano, in particular in one school, we were quite interested in this topic in the terms of having a virtual computer lab, because you know, there are schools that have many labs, in some cases labs with dual boots, and in order to reduce the number of dual boots, for, because having a dual boot in, uh, in a school is a quite uh, uh, time-consuming uh, uh, task. The idea of having a virtual computer lab in a uh, well-configured server was a, was a, is a solution for this uh, uh, for this problem. So, so moving from physical to virtual. Thanks so much, Dashamir. So um, I'm going to make a demonstration. Uh, actually, so I don't have any slides. Uh, I have a blog, which is uh, this one, with the instructions that I'm going to use. To use. Uh, a virtual computer lab is a desktop server uh, in the cloud. So we install a Linux uh, server in the cloud and uh, it is possible to access it from uh, a browser, from the top of a browser. And it can be accessed uh, from, for, uh, from the students at home and also from the teacher at home. So the virtual computer lab is uh, somewhere on the server in the cloud and it can be accessed uh, from home. And they can collaborate with each other. The teacher can, can see what the students are doing and he can help them if uh, needed. Uh, maybe you can, uh, you can guess that I developed this kind of system. It, actually, it is an integration of different uh, tools and uh, software. I did this uh, two or three years ago during the, the pandemic because this was an interesting, interesting uh, topic, uh, how to collaborate remotely or how to work remotely. It is also, also possible to install a virtual computer lab in a school. So you install it in a LAN, in a computer in, in a LAN, and uh, the students and the teacher are also on the same class, on the same LAN, but they uh, collaborate. Uh, the students open the browser and connect to, uh, to, the, to the server, and also the teacher connects, and they can collaborate in. Uh, in in this environment. In this demonstration, I will, I will show only the first case, how to install it in the cloud. And, uh, <coughs> so this is a, a diagram of uh, what I'm going to install, or I will try to do it anyway. Uh, so uh, there is a server in, in the cloud and uh, there is Docker installed. Uh, in it, so there is the Docker environment, and Docker has also a virtual LAN. Docker always has a virtual LAN, and I'm going to install some Docker containers, and uh, I will install Guacamole in one container, and uh, the users will access Guacamole, for example, with an address like this, uh, vclab.example.org, uh, and uh, I will install also uh, Linux Mint uh, and uh, Debian. I will try to install them in uh, different containers. And the students and the teacher or the users can access Guacamole and from Guacamole they can uh, access one of these uh, servers. But in order to access Guacamole, since it, it has a web interface, we also need a reverse pro proxy because we may have other uh, applications uh, installed in this uh, Docker. And also reverse proxy anyway helps us to manage the SSL certificates. Uh, this, uh, this container, this reverse proxy that I'm going to to install. And so the steps are like this. First, I need to install Docker, the step number one, and, the, and Docker script as well. Docker scripts are a framework of bash uh, scripts that help to maintain, to install and maintain uh, Docker containers. 
And the second step is to install a Docker container with a rev proxy, reverse proxy, which is actually nginx with uh, some other things. For, exa for example, it can also manage uh, SSL certificates uh, from Let's Encrypt. And I'm going to install in another container uh, uh, guacamole. Then I will install uh, Linux Mint Mate in another container named the name of the container will be Mate One, and also Debian LXD uh, if we have time. And uh, I, I will set up the configuration of uh, Guacamole to access uh, uh, to access these two uh, servers. So these are these are the steps again: install Docker and Docker scripts. Uh, Install uh, rev proxy, uh, install, install uh, Guacamole, install uh, Linux Mint, set up Guacamole to access uh, Linux Mint, and then re repeat the last two steps for Debian LXD. Install Docker. Installing Docker is easy. Uh, everybody can do it uh, easily. Uh, one of the simplest ways is, is this one. Uh, download this. Uh, download this script from internet and uh, run it. I have done it already and I have installed uh, Docker. In, in this uh, virtual machine. Uh, in, install Docker scripts. So as I said, Docker scripts are a framework of uh, bash uh, scripts for Dockerized applications. And we can install them with uh, these commands. First of all, we need to install some packages on which uh, it depends. The next thing is uh, to clone this uh, repository. This GitLab uh, repository. And I will clone it in, in this uh, directory. So it is just a git clone. <clears throat> and then I will go to uh, to this uh, to the dire directory that I downloaded this script. And uh, I will run uh, make install. So Docker script is already installed with a couple of commands. And when we install Docker scripts, it makes available this command, uh, ds. It is actually a bash script, but uh, we can use it as, as a command. And we will use this command to install the other the, the containers. Now we will install the container of uh, reverse proxy. First, uh, I will need, uh, pull the scripts for Docker script for reverse proxy. With this command, DS pool and uh, the name of the application. Actually, this DS pool is also another Git clone, and it is cloning from this uh, from this GitLab repository. And then I will initiate a directory for this uh, for this container. DS init. Uh, this is the name of the uh, script, and this is the name of the directory uh, that will be created. It has uh, initialized it in, in this directory. I'm going to this directory, and uh, I can build the container with this command ds make. But before, let's check the settings. This 
uh, I, I will change only this SSL cert, uh, email, which is needed to get let's encrypt certificates. I'm putting my own email address here. And then this meant to build the container. The next thing is to install a guacamole container. And the, the way that we install it is similar to uh, the way that we install mm -hmm. the end, uh, the reverse proxy container. So first we will pull these uh, scripts for guacamole from GitLab. And uh, the next step is to initialize uh, a directory for this container and the name of the directory will be like this, vclab.example.org. It can be anything, but uh, since I'm going to use a domain for this uh, for this container, I am uh, I name the directory uh, to be the same as the as the dom domain, so that I don't mix uh, up different containers that I install uh, on Docker. So the name of the directory is the same as the name of the domain. So a reverse proxy has been already installed. We see that uh, it is uh, running. And also the ports 8, uh, 80 and 443 are forwarded to this container, to reverse proxy. So I'm uh, getting the scripts for uh, guacamole and then I will run this ds init command. But I will change the domain to the domain that I'm going to use uh, in this case, because example.org uh, is just for testing it. And I'm using this uh, domain, vclab.lubiz.org. So, in this directory var ds uh, we are which is used to uh, to create the directories for for the containers now we have a directory for uh, reverse proxy and we have this directory for the container of guacamole i'm going to this directory there is this settings dot uh, sh I will change the domain here to match uh, the domain, uh, the real domain, because this is just an example. And also, I need uh, to change uh, either the admin uh, name or the admin password. So, these are the, the, the default ones, and if we, we use this one, uh, everybody can access. But I'm going to use a simple password. There are some other options as well, but uh, we don't need to modify them this time. After uh, customizing these uh, settings, I can build a container with uh, DSMate. So uh, now the container is being built. Uh, and actually, it is finished very quickly. Now that the container is being built, we can try to access uh, guacamole in uh, this in this domain. Uh, 
account. And we get a login so prompt from Apache Guacamole, and we will use the admin account. Admin and pass one, two, three, four. Uh, we see that now it is empty, no recent connections and uh, no connections. Connections are connections to a server. Uh, but we are going to install a uh, Linux Mint server soon, and then we will add a connection uh, into the configuration of uh, Guacamole. So the next step is to install uh, a Linux Mint server in a container. And again, we follow this uh, step. Pull, pull the script. And then uh, initiate or initialize a directory. Then go to this directory. Uh, check the settings. And uh, here at Epoptest users, we uh, set these two users as uh, Epop users that can use can open Epoptest, admin and uh, user one. We also uncomment these two lines for uh, creating an admin user. It is not necessary to have an admin user, but uh, sometimes uh, it may be needed. So we are done with uh, settings. Uh, now we also can uh, create an, uh, a file that is named account.txt, uh, which contains uh, user accounts that will be created. For example, let's say there are, there are these four uh, user accounts. Now we can build the container with uh, DSMA. It took some time, but uh, it is almost done. Uh, after installing uh, this Mate server, we have to, we should go back to Guacamole and uh, set up a connection to this server on Guacamole. And we manage uh, the configuration of Guacamole with, uh, first of all, uh, if we log in as admin, uh, then we can uh, manage the configuration from the graphical user interface. We go to settings and then we go to the connections and then we say add new connection and uh, so on. But uh, uh, this, this is, uh, in my opinion, tedious and uh, uh, it, has, it has also lo lots of options, and you don't know what you should change, what you should not change. So uh, there is this uh, this <coughs> command line command uh, 
this uh, command line tool, uh, DS Guard. And uh, it can be used to, to manage uh, connections. For example, uh, this, this one, uh, Cron Head, is for adding a connection to manage users, users of Guacamole, uh, like admin that was logged into Guacamole. We can create other, other users that uh, can log in to Guacamole. And also, which user can use uh, which uh, <coughs> connection? So uh, let's let's add a server. Uh, let's add a connection to Mate One uh, server that we just installed. And we can use a command like this: ds uh, uh, connection add uh, Mate One. RDP. This is the type of connection, uh, RDP connection. We can also <coughs> add an SSH uh, connection. And uh, now, if we check to the interface of Wagamoli, let's make a refresh. We see that we have these two connections: Mate One RDP and uh, Mate One SSH. Let's click on uh, Mate One RDP, for example. Uh, we get a login from. Uh, now we can use one of the accounts that we created on Matter One. So we can use uh, one of these accounts, for example, user one plus one. And uh, we get the Linux Mint uh, desktop, which is running in, inside a browser. So it is a Linux Linux Mint desktop. But uh, we had uh, we used the admin account to to connect to this Guacamole uh, to, to 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 Guacamole. Uh, it is not advisable to allow everyone to connect as admin because they can also change the settings. We can create another user Guacamole user. Uh, so that it can be used by uh, the other users, by the normal users. And to, cre to create a guacamole, another guaca gu guacamole user, we can use this, this uh, command. So it is uh, DS guac user at, uh, this is the name of the user and this is the, the password. So all the users of uh, class one, for example, will connect to Guacamole with uh, this username and password. And uh, le let's try to, to do it. First of all, we will log out from admin. And let's try class one and the password was the pass one, two, three. Now we are connected as uh, user class one, but we have no connections to uh, servers. Uh, so we need to uh, associate some connections to, to this user. And we can do it with a command like, uh, like this. Yes, work user connect uh, user class one to connection uh, matter one RDP. And if uh, we make a refresh now, uh, because there is a single connection, it automatically tries to open this connection. If there were two connections, then we will get to the list and uh, we could choose which to which server to connect, to this one or to this one. But since there is just one connection, uh, when the user class one is uh, logged into Guacamole, it automatically forwards it to, to this connection. And again, we can 
uh, use one of the accounts on uh, Linux Mint. And you see the, this is the same account that we logged in uh, before. Now let's see how uh, people can collaborate with, uh, with Guacamole. One way of uh, collaboration is to share this Guacamole session with other people. And uh, I, I am pressing Control Alt and uh, Shift, Control Alt and Shift, and I get this uh, Control pan Panel uh, on the left, which is a Control Panel of Guacamole. And here there is this menu, Share. And there are two options, uh, share for watching and uh, share for collaboration. If I share for watching, it will give me an URL. I, I can share, share this URL with other people and they will be able to watch my session, what I am doing uh, on my computer, uh, on this virtual uh, computer, Mate One. If I uh, click on collaboration, I will get another URL uh, connection. And if I share it with uh, other people, they will also be able to work on the same uh, on the same session that I am working. Uh, for example, uh, I, I don't know how to make a right click to copy the URL here. If I click here, okay, it it opened. It's not, it's not. So uh, you see that uh, there are uh, two different tabs. I'm closing this control panel. And if I uh, work here, if I type something, uh, the other person the other person will uh, will see what I am doing, and uh, if he types something, uh, the other person will uh, will see. Uh, so they can work at the same time on the same uh, desktop, on the same session, being on different computers through, through the internet. So this is this is one way of uh, collaboration. We have just a few minutes. Yes. And uh, another way is using uh, Epoctus. Epoctus is a software that is used in a classroom of computers uh, where the teacher can uh, see what the uh, students are doing. Uh, so let's, let's try to open uh, Epoptus. And uh, I get an interface like this. Now uh, let's try to log in uh, as another uh, user. I will log in as uh, user user two. Now the teacher is seeing that uh, another user is logged in, and if other users are logged in, they will be listed here. And uh, if we try to make the preview larger, it may be also visible what uh, they are doing. Now, if I if the teacher wants to access the desktop of uh, the user. Uh, he can select the user and uh, click on, on uh, this icon. And you see that we now have, have this, uh, we have this window uh, in which uh, we access the desktop of, uh, the, of the user, of the student. And the teacher can also operate on this window so they can, they can work uh, together. So let, let me close this one. 
if there are multiple uh, users uh, logged in, uh, we can select all the icons of, of these uh, users and then the mouse is not helping me. And then there, there is this uh, option here to broadcast, broadcast screen, either a full screen or window. If I broadcast a screen, if the teacher broadcasts screen, then uh, the students will see the screen of the teacher and whatever the teacher does, they will be able to, to see it. And this is uh, for teachers to demonstrate something to, to the students. Okay, the time is out, let's, uh, let's stop it here. Thank you, Dashimir. Questions, just two minutes for questions, if we can make it. <laughs> well, uh, I haven't understood anything nearly, but I know that what he has done is registered. Uh, right? Yes. We, we did register. It is recorded, yes. So if tomorrow morning I think, oh, I'll try again, I can have a look at it and I can do what you have done. And so maybe by practicing, understand something. Am I right? Right. So, uh, a colleague was here and I think he went away because he's, I don't understand anything. Okay, right? that's fine. But that's, look, but that, we have two worlds, the world of technical knowledge and the world of good ideas and those things will bring them together i have understand everything and uh, i really like the project i i would have a lot of questions but i think i make you later because the okay we will we will discuss it but very 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 interesting very, so very, it's very the beginning i can tell you uh, io vi dico quello che mi ha impressionato da da shamir nelle ultime settimane è la sua voglia di condividere ciò che sa. È faticoso per chi ascolta, chiaro. Però il fatto che lui documenta è tutto ciò, è come il software libro, una volta documentato lo puoi riprendere. Like recipe. Uh, you, you can, can give the recipe you, to some you, other, you can so that they can cook it uh, themselves. Ecco, questo mi dispiace per chi non, non c'è e magari sarebbe rimasto frustrato essendo qua, <ride> ma bisogna uh, tenerlo presente, questa è la mia opinione. No? Io non sono tecnico, ma questo è un mio approccio a un mondo che in fin dei conti deve unirsi. Bene. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah. Una domanda solo con... Uh, non sarebbe anche un'idea di fare un setup di installazione sorry I, can, I cannot speak in Italian. I understand Italian but cannot speak so I will speak in English so it is so simple that you can install it, you can install it in less than uh, one hour. Uh, but simpler than that, uh, it is ask somebody to install it for you. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. But maybe maybe there are some others yes. knowing how to yeah. create a setup. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I like I am a technician, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that really easier than that uh, is difficult. But uh, what you are asking maybe is a final solution, and so. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that maybe a company or a service company or team like uh, uh, not, tec not uh, technical should be able to install it. Yeah, every, everyone should be able, but uh, um, you have the um, same like uh, how to maintain it, how to manage it. So it's very, very easy. I think uh, the installation and very uh, well documented, but. Uh, Bravely, you can say, okay, I don't need a technician or because, uh, um, yeah, if you have teachers that uh, are interested uh, following the documentation, they could learn because they are a little bit inside this uh, world. But if you are not a little bit inside this world, 
yeah, it's better that there is maybe a Russian uh, company or yeah, someone that can. Uh, but from this work that you have done, every company could uh, decide to do a solution for you, or you can ask at every company saying, okay, I would like to have this, but it's all there. I think that the basics of Linux uh, commands are necessary. Uh, somebody yeah. needs to know the basics. And then also some uh, basics of uh, uh, how the DNS works and uh, how to install things in a cloud, in, in a server in cloud. Uh, these are not very difficult, but uh, maybe they are difficult for non-technical uh, people. And usually when something is not working, you have to understand why. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's great. Where can we find the documentation? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I will post the link on the chat on the blue button. Uh, I, I will give the link to Hansa to post it in a few minutes. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you.